Welcome to Way Back Wednesday. And here we go. Welcome to Nugget 114 with Steve Groman. And today we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite people. I know who that is. That would be Nikola Tesla. Absolutely. But you know what's sad about this? Is that most people don't even know who Nikola Tesla is. And he actually affects your daily life more than you can even imagine. Sometimes when we're just talking with people, ask them, have you heard of Tesla? And they think, oh yeah, because they think of the car. Right. <laughs> no, I mean the guy, Nikola Tesla. I think he'd probably hit his, he- his hand oh. on his forehead and hit his head on the table if he knew that his name was attached yeah, to that car, so, I think. Maybe, so I don't know. So many innovative things and discoveries that have been done and how things are expanding electrically. So much of it is Tesla's concepts, Tesla's study. He was applying science, but he had a rival. Who was it? Thomas Edison. And one of the interesting things about these two men is they were contemporaries. We saw something really amazing at one of the most fabulous places in the United States to visit, the Henry Ford Museum. And as many of you know, I've written three travel history guides, often on the beaten path. The Henry Ford Museum is the only thing that got five stars in the whole Eastern Edition. The Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village are a team of museums. One's indoor, one is outdoor. We were just going through the museum, just looking at all the stuff, reading signs and taking pictures and just do doing what you do in a museum. I remember all of a sudden you, you just kind of uh, gasped and uh, look at what is going on with you. And I said, Okay, this is one of those I can't (laughs) breathe moments. And that to me just means I'm just, I'm blown away. And what we saw was this case that was a tribute to Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, which was strange that they had put the information on in the same display case because they were strong adversaries. But what we saw, tell them what I was freaking out over. A tube that I suppose it's legit still in there, but it's uh, Thomas Edison's last breath. The glass vial has a little placard next to it that says Thomas Edison was Henry Ford's hero, as well as his friend. During Edison's final illness, this test tube was close to his bedside. Upon his death, it was sealed with paraffin wax. Edison's son later sent his father's, quote, last breath to Henry Ford, knowing their close relationship. If that doesn't make you stop breathing, I don't know what will. And in this case is a bust of Thomas Edison along with Nikola Tesla's death mask. This was a, a popular thing that was done in this time frame. Tesla's death mask is adjacent to an electric motor that was made in 18. 89 uh, at Westinghouse Electric Company in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It was invented by Nikola Tesla, a brilliant Serbian immigrant. Motors like this allowed alternated current to be used for running machinery as well as for lighting. Yeah, and AC is what we all use today, and Edison was working on DC, Tesla was working on AC. And, DC's uh, direct current. Correct, like like batteries give you, AC for like what the wall plug in your, in your house gives you. Yeah, they were contemporaries with each other working on opposite ends of things, and there was a bit of a, bit of a bitter feud, and it wasn't necessarily on Tesla's part, because he really wanted to work with Edison, but Tesla believed, and it wasn't just a belief, he proved it could be done, he could actually pull electricity out of the atmosphere, and he said that he could provide electricity to to everybody on earth totally free. And that was the key. That's why he was sent out to pasture basically and ignored and ruined as an inventor because what he was doing wouldn't make money for the powers that be. Edison and Tesla lived at a time when the prominent men in America were the, was J.P. Morgan, Carnegie, Rockefeller. These men were the ones who were shaping industry. And because Tesla's inventions would provide freedom and free products, that was not the avenue they wanted right, to they take. They wanted to make money. They needed to go with Edison, who would be able to control and charge. And so Tesla was sort of, uh, he was just sent outcast. To, yeah, he was, he was an outcast. But and a brilliant, brilliant man. The way I always look at him is he was a true scientist. He did experiments. He proved not just his thoughts were right, and he wanted to better society. Uh, Nikola Tesla was born on July 10th in 1856 in Serbia. He was a Serbian-American, an inventor, an electrical engineer, a mechanical engineer, a physicist, and futurist, best known for his contributions to design of the modern alternating current electrical supply system. Tesla started working in the telephony and electric fields before immigrating to the United States in 1884 to work 
worked for Thomas Edison. Yes, at first they were friends and they worked together, but their minds went in different directions and they were two different styled men. One was an inventor and one was more of an entrepreneur. Many have said that Edison didn't do a lot of his own, didn't do a lot of the inventing. It was more all the people he had working for him. And we've been to Edison's in yes. New Jersey and that was that was an amazing place. And as we were walking through his factory, we were walking down the stairs. I said, just think. Thomas Edison walked up and down these stairs. One of the rangers was giving a lecture in one of the laboratories, and we just joined up with the tour. And he was saying how whenever you go over to the factory, you will be able to walk up and down the stairs that Thomas Edison did. And I just cracked up because I was like, I just said that. His patented AC induction motor and transformer were licensed by George Westinghouse. Again, another big name in this whole time frame. This was the revolutionary time in this country. Everything was coming That together. shaped everything that we know. Tesla is known for being in New York City. He's known for Wardenclyffe out on Long Island. He's, Colorado Springs. Right. We went to go. Important. We wanted to go see his museum in Colorado Springs. And we'll tell you in the next nugget what happened when we went to go see his museum in Colorado Springs. And we do want to talk about Wardenclyffe. And we do want to talk about the New Yorker Hotel where he lived. Yes, and if you have this article on there, it also says uh, his ill-fated attempt at intercontinental wireless transmission in his un- an unfinished Warden Cliff Tower project. And it wasn't really an ill-fated project, what people think of that. It didn't work. He had worked too well. We'll have to tell you what he said. <laughs> yes, absolutely. This concludes part one of a four-part series on Nikola Tesla. Hope you'll enjoy all of these nuggets. Thank you.